there guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to a modern magazine thing. Because this time we're looking at Dungeons & Dragons Adventurer issue number 43. Yes, I managed to actually get three issues in a row, which is absolutely unheard of. I've perhaps absolutely mastered the technique of what time and what day to go in to get it before somebody else grabs it off the shelf in the shop. But we shall see if I manage four weeks in a row, whether I manage to get the next issue. But anyway, this is a pretty interesting one. It's continuing in the direction of more guidance for games masters than players. And that's absolutely brilliant, because as we know, games masters need the support. But anyway, let's have a look through Dungeons & Dragons Adventurer issue number 43. So, this is Dungeons & Dragons Adventurer issue number 43. Now we'll get the bag out of the way as usual. And we're left with a magazine and some dice. Now these are clear purple glittery ones. I don't know whether the camera's showing up the little bits of glitter inside. They're fairly nice lo looking. Um, my wife said they weren't purple. She would said they were lilac. Now, for some reason, some of the numbers look a bit smudged. I don't know whether they just need cleaned off. Some of the ink has overflowed. But they look all right. They've been imported from China, apparently. They feel all right. There's no Dungeons & Dragons logo on them or anything. They're just a cheap set of imported dice. And the magazine itself. Well, new and exclusive adventure. Totally awesome, dealing with dinosaurs. Ranger, Drake Warden and Hunter. Duergar, the Grey Dwarves. And revealed how players can inspire DMs. Um, inside, we've got the contents page. And we've got Spotlight on the players. And it's talking about... You know, when you present your players with a countdown event, then obviously you're wanting them. But the rest of the time, you can just let them be quiet and mull on the situation. Silence isn't a problem. It's them thinking rather than speaking. Um, it's got some really good advice in here. You know, ask questions to clarify what's going on. Safeguard the player's agency, so don't railroad them. Get good feedback at the end. And borrow judiciously. Because... We all do this as DMs. You know, the players are talking about the idea and they come up with something far better than we've created. And we just slot that into the adventure. You know, that merchant that they think is a spy for the bad guy, well, you never actually thought of that. But that's a really good idea. So you build that into your adventure. You let them be right, even when they're wrong sometimes. Fantastic advice. We've got part two of spellcasting feats, so we've got a few more. Spell Sniper, um, with different elements from it. And then we've got subclasses again. So the Ranger Drake Warden, where they have a Drake Companion, a small dragon they ride. We've got the Ranger Hunter and Swarm Keeper. Ranger's connection to the environment tones their hunting talents to help them bond with a swarm of nature spirits. Then we've got Dinosaurs as the Monsters. So we've got different types, you know, Brontosaurus, Dionysus, Pleosaurus, Quetzalcoatlus, Triceratops, and Tyrannosaurus rexes. Um, kind of cool. I've never really used dinosaurs in my adventures, but I understand the appeal of them, especially if you're running with kids. Then we've got the Grey Dwarves, the Duragar, which are a bit different from how I remember, but, you know... Grim and dour dwarves of the Underdark potent latent psychic powers as the result of horrific experiments performed by Mind Flayers. There we go through those, what Duragar like in combat, encounters with them, um, inspirations, where they come from, and playing as one. And another section on monsters, we've got the Cloakers and Dark Mantles. So we've got basically three types of monsters this time. We've had two introduced, and all three are used in the adventure this time. So we've got things about cloakers and dark mantles themselves. And then we've got the adventure. Um, it's just an encounter. Basically, the players are traveling and they encounter a lake. The Dark Lake in the Underdark. The Dark Lake is more than just patrolling Duragar. They have depths are home to a pair of Pleosauruses and the cavern ceiling hides a congregated group of hungry dark mantles. So it gives you different ways of approaching it. You know, what you see as you arrive at it, how to cross it, whether you're going to make deals with Juraga, whether you're going to sneak past them. We've got bargaining, we've got paying the toll. Um, we've got the Pleosauruses as you paddle across it. 
whether you decide to climb scaffolding, which is on one wall, which is unstable, but also there's dark mantles above, so they might swoop down and attack. Um, whether you're sailing across, where you've been discovered by the Juragar, if you didn't pay it, if you were trying to sneak across. And finally, we've got entering the crypt of King Argosh. Well, that's the summit of this adventure. There's no more than it. It's reaching the other bank. If you were using the adventure in a random setting or this encounter, um, there's nothing special about it. It's just leading on to the next part of the overall adventure. We've got a stat block for the Dark Mantle. We've got stat blocks for Juragar, their different actions. We've got stat block for the Pleosaurus. And rather interestingly, we've got a stat block for a vehicle. We've got a folding boat here. So a standard container, the cloth part of it rolls out with various struts. You support it and it's a boat. It mentions that it's for four creatures, but if your party's larger and you're using it in the adventure, just make it larger. It doesn't matter. Um, Creature capacity, two crew, two passengers. Cargo capacity, 0.2 of a ton. Travel pace, three miles an hour. Its stats, its damage immunities. So obviously as a boat, it's immune to poison and psychic. It's also immune to various conditions. It cannot be blinded, charmed, deafened, exhausted, frightened, incapacitated, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, uh, prone, stunned, or unconscious. Um, although I can think of ways that you might incorporate those into different effects. Anyway, it says they're immune to it. Uh, it can move according to its, using its oars if it has a crew. It's armor class 11, 50 hit points, and control and movement. Now, this is the first time they've put a vehicle into the magazine. And this is pretty cool, because it's showing how you're just using the standard rules. It's standard armor class to hit it. It's got a bunch of hit points before it's destroyed. Um, the oars have slightly different... So if you're using them in combat, you can destroy the ores to disable it, because they've got less hit points. Quite nice. Magazine as well. The cover's not up to much. It's a bit muddy for my liking, although it is the outdoors, as I commented, I quite liked before. But the artwork's not terribly clear, but it's a standard adventuring setting. I really do like spotlighting on the players. That's really good for uh, Games Masters, who at the start, might think they have to be in charge of everything. But borrowing from your players and letting them inspire you during play is a key part of role-playing games. It's interactive storytelling and getting input off your players to enhance your story is something you definitely have to take on board. And it's wonderful that this magazine is focusing on that. So that was Dungeons & Dragons Adventure issue number 43. Now, I really like that one. That first article on leaning on your players for ideas is absolutely brilliant. Now, I've got some 40 years of experience games mastering, and I use that technique all the time. But I found it very reassuring to find a source which was backing up that that's how I should be doing it. That I haven't just come up with these random ideas, that this is what other people are doing as well. But also, I like the fact that it's supporting new Games Masters. We've all read about there being a Games Master shortage, but there being a magazine out there helping new Games Masters and teaching them these techniques, which it's taken us in decades to pick up, is absolutely fabulous. Now, there's other things in it. The three monsters all being used in the same adventure. That's absolutely brilliant. Although the adventure itself, you're basically just crossing a lake. There's not too much in there. It's a little disappointing. But there's a stuff in there for the players as well on their character classes. You know, the subclasses they've got for the different ranger types. That's very nice. But it's the focusing more on the Games Master as the issue's gone on, which I'm really, really liking from Dungeons & Dragons Adventurer. I think it could be really useful if this continues as a pattern. But anyway, I think I've been waffling on for quite long enough. So thank you very much for watching. As always, most of all, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.